Hello, it's Steve here again from the Studio One Soapbox and in today's video I want to take a look at phase and alignment issues. Now I know that uh, we are looking at a sample of Pro Tools here Blah. but uh, it's just to show you that in Pro Tools we had a free plugin that came with Pro Tools called Time Adjuster and we could use this to uh, fix, easily fix I should say, our alignment and our phase issues. So what I want to show you quickly is how it would have been done in Pro Tools. So here we have the tracks loaded up in Pro Tools um, and now if we just highlight the kick far and try and gauge the distance of the kick close um, let's try that again. Let's take another stab at that. Uh, Okay, over to the start of kick close, we have roughly an estimate of 76 samples. So what we'll do is come down, load up time adjuster on the track we want to delay, which is kick far. If you come to that little box, we just punch in 76 samples. 76, there we go. And that is the alignment taken care of. Simple. Now you can see the phase issue is still going. When one is going up, the other is going down. And we need to flip the phase on the kick far. So how we did that time gesture, just click this little button and that was it done. So we have set the alignment and the phase all with a time adjuster in Pro Tools. So how can we do the same thing in Studio One? Uh, unfortunately, Studio One doesn't come with the lovely Time Adjuster uh, plugin. So we have to find a different way of doing things. And I have found a manual way of uh, doing it. It does require a little bit of mathematics, but very simple formula. So as you can see, I have the same kick close and kick far. And as you can see, uh, the kick far is out of phase with uh, the kick close and the kick sub. As you can see, kick close and kick sub are pretty much in phase with each other. Uh, but when it comes to the kick far, it needs flipped uh, on the phase. And also, as you can see here, um, it is off. Let's just scroll this by about there's 63 samples, as you can see on the little number given at the side. Um, I have set our time base in samples uh, just so that we can work in samples as you do with time adjuster in Pro Tools. So if we take this one and we can see we've got about 70. If we take this one and we go to the start mm, roughly 63. If we go to this we have five, see it's coming oh, about 70. So roughly we're talking about 70 samples that we need to delay the kick far track for. So if we open up our inspector on the kick far track and we looked over here, as you can see, we can delay the track in any milliseconds that we require. So in this case, on the quick far, um, we're working in samples. So how do we turn the samples, which we have estimated to be approximately, let's try this again. We'll start at the start of that, scroll up to its match, about 70 samples. So how do we turn 70 samples into milliseconds for our delay? Well, there is a simple basic formula for doing this. And really all the formula is, is this. You take your samples and you divide it by the project rate uh, that you're working in. So for instance, in this case, you can see I'm working in 44.1. The samples that it's off by is roughly, let's do it again, take the front of this to its corresponding one on the other track, and we're roughly about 70 samples, as you can see by the tiny number in brackets. So that would mean we take 70 samples, we divide that by our project um, rate, which is 44.1, and that gives us one roughly 1.58 milliseconds. 
So, before I do this, I'm going to let you play these two tracks that I've soloed, and you'll hear a bit of uh, phase issues, and you also will hear a bit of flamming going on. So, just quickly, let's hear these tracks going. Okay, so you can hear there's very little volume there. So firstly, let's fix um, the alignment. So we had 1.58 of a delay in milliseconds, which is 70 samples, as we have just worked out on our little equation. And let's hear what that sounds like with just the delay, but we still haven't flipped the phase as of yet. So let's hear that. zero. Hear this flam. Let's click that back in here, 1.58. You can hear the time and is more on. There's less of an echo type of flam effect on it. Now, to finish this off, we need to flip the face. The easiest way to do that in Studio One is if we come down to Presonus and we load in our mix tool, very handy little tool. And over here we have inferred phase. So as you can see, where this hit is going up, in the kick far, it's going down. So we need to flip the phase the right way up. So let's click that. And now we have uh, uh, set our alignment, our millisecond delay. We flip the phase. And what I'll try and do is click these in and out. It's not gonna be easy to do both at the same time. So I'll just click the phase on and off and you will hear that the volume and the thump of the kick is coming in and out as we flip the phase. So let's take the phase off firstly, let's play it back and I'll bring in the phase. Flip the phase. Do you hear the thickness of that kick track now? Take it out. plugins available that will do this for you automatically and see if you're working out uh, basic formulas and stuff but obviously they come at cost. Uh, one example if I just go to our browser here um, a very popular one you'll see it used in lots of uh, mixes across uh, YouTube is uh, Sound Radix Auto Align but as you can see it's $149 uh, dollars. so ex maybe not expensive to some but for the home a producer who's producing out of a bedroom or in his basement, that, that can be quite expensive, you know. Uh, obviously, this does things far quicker. Uh, it's just a quick um, analyze and bada bing, bada boom, uh, everything's aligned. But let's go back to Studio One. Um, as you can see, this is um, simply done in um, Studio One. Uh, we may not have a time adjuster plugin. Uh, free with it but as you can see if we flip our time base into samples if we uh, bring up our two tracks we zoom in we have a look at our waveforms and we sort of guesstimate um, the gap there again you can see in the brackets we have 70 samples uh, we just work out the formula it is the samples divided by the project rate which in this case is 44.1. And that gives us roughly 1.58 milliseconds. We bring up our inspector heading F4. Here we have the delay and we simply punch in 1.58 milliseconds. Now, of course, um, a lot of people would chomp up the track here, uh, maybe slipstream the, this uh, to a line 
a bit better. But I don't like doing that because uh, in large projects, if you've started the slipstream audio, um, if you've used some sort of other time adjustment by manually cutting and moving the track, um, you can get lost in what you've actually done. Um, if you're going to do that, I would suggest you make a copy of the track and leave the original alone, just in case you mess up in some way. So, uh, hopefully you will find that little tip um, easy to do. And uh, as you can see, it costs nothing. The tools are there. We use Mix Tool to invert any phase issues. And just before we go, um, I'll scroll down and show you we have a snare up and a snare down so if we solo those two let's pull them out and pull that out as well and we try and zoom into these let's see if I can pick up where the transient is I think that looks like it there and um, let's enhance that a little so we can see what we're doing and um, as you can see from this example, um, it does look like we have phase issues here. Yes, um, not too bad. You can see that things are going the right way. But on this track, if I scroll down a bit more just so we see what we're doing, we can see that the snare up mic has come in first picked up the sound before the snow on the bottom. Roughly there's about 12 milliseconds. Let's take that one down to about there. There's about 21. Um, let's, uh, let's try that one. Yeah, there's definitely um, a bit of things. So we could actually fix that as well. Um, again, we can scroll down to the start. We could say there's about 12, 12 or so samples there. Um, really, that's not um, a large amount. By the time you would divide that by 44.1, you would have a micro millisecond setting. Probably not worth bothering with. Um, I do think that you shouldn't um, scientifically analyze everything. You know, it will then make tracks and mixes sound maybe a little bit too robotic and sometimes it's nice to let little idiosyncrasies go uh, it does add to the human aspect of the track in the days when everything must be you know pristine and we're so exact and we're so digital in the digital age so uh, hopefully you found that of interest uh, hopefully you will be able to use that on your tracks because alignment uh, can seriously affect the sound, the volume of your track as you've seen and heard. So thank you for joining me today. Hope that was helpful. Happy mixing and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.